Welcome back to my channel and to the ultimate California road trip itinerary. If you are looking to book a California road trip and you want some help planning the itinerary, then this is a video for you. I'm going to be sharing all of the amazing places in California not to be missed and how you can fit them in to this ultimate two week itinerary. Don't forget to subscribe for more helpful videos and let's get on into the itinerary. If you are flying in from the UK, it's a long old flight, so grab what you can on the plane. But my advice, especially if you're traveling with young children, is to grab a cheap hotel hotel at LAX to catch up on some sleep before your adventure begins in the morning. Then first thing in the morning hit the road because less than an hour away your first stop is going to be Orange County. Take the morning at Huntington Beach famed for its excellent surf and the Huntington Beach Pier. There's lots to do and see around this really cool and trendy beach town. After lunch, drive 20 minutes down the road to Laguna Beach to settle into your accommodation. This is a beautiful town and there's lots to see and do. We stayed at Laguna Lodge Hotel and it was a great location with an okay breakfast. Head down to the beach for some afternoon fun, stretch those legs, have some dinner or stroll around downtown. The next day I'd suggest a visit to Dana Point. Have a stroll around the harbour, then up to Lanton Bay Park. Look out for free yoga on the field or an event at Dohudi Beach. A visit to Ruby's Diner is a fun place for dinner with a rooftop with a sunset. Marina Park is a cool place to visit for kids. Have a look around Balboa Island if you have time. It's a very quaint and good place for an afternoon. Next up is two days in Palm Springs. This is a little out of your way, so you may not wish to add it in, but personally, I think it is well worth the drive. Don't forget to stop off at the Cabazon Dinosaurs for a cool photo opportunity, and there's also a huge outlet there as well if you want to do some shopping. Palm Springs isn't that big, so anywhere downtown will be close to the action. I love it for its relaxed old Hollywood feel and art deco buildings. Take a stroll and grab a milkshake at Great Shakes to take in this colourful city's vibe. The next day I'd recommend a visit to the Palm Springs Aerial Tramway. I will leave a link in the description bar where you can find more information. But it is the world's largest rotating tram car which travels two and a half miles up into the pristine wilderness of San Jacinto State Park. At eight and a half thousand feet the views over the Coachella Valley are incredible but take a warm jacket because the temperatures do drop. Don't forget to drive through the iconic wind farm before heading off to your next destination. Next is one of your longest drives at four and a half hours. The next stop is in Solvang which is an authentic Danish town which is one of my favorite discoveries in California just because it is so unique. I only suggest one day for Solvang because although it looks cute one day is definitely enough time to experience it. There's a really cool local farmer's market if that's your thing once a week and I'd highly recommend a visit to a winery if you can. They are amazing. Heading back out onto Highway 1 for another one night stop. This is a relatively long drive, if you're from the UK that is. Pop into Ascadero for a quick stop off and enjoy this quaint little laid back American town. Your next destination is going to be Santa Cruz. I have to admit I don't actually really love it here, but I know so many people who do, so I had to include it in this itinerary. Have some time stretching your legs at the beach or hit the huge arcade. There's enough here to do for a day with some time to pop downtown after a trip to the beach for some dinner and it's quite pretty here in the evenings but definitely take a coat every time i've been here it's rained okay i am so excited for this next stop because i'm pretty sure it's my most favorite city in america and that's why i suggested three days here it's up to san francisco i actually have a whole video of things to do in san francisco so be sure to watch that i'll leave the link in the description bar for you and on the screen as I've done a full video here already, I won't share too much, but there is so much to do in this fantastic city. My main tip is to pack comfy shoes and just walk, walk, walk. It's the best way to see everything that this amazing city has to offer. From city to park to beach, San Francisco really has it all. And I actually also have a blog post over on adventuresofamum.com if you want more information. This is a great way to see the bridge. It's a fantastic view. It's over the bridge across to Sausalito. Don't forget to check out my Instagram if you don't already because I've got heaps of cool travel pictures as well as normal day-to-day -day life. So we're in Sausalito now just for a little stopover. We actually decided to stay the night but you could stay in San Francisco if you so wished but that is a great photo opportunity of the bridge. So heading south now down to Monterey. It's a two-hour drive and we stayed at the Intercontinental which was absolute luxury and right in the center of town everything was on our doorstep so we didn't need our car for the next two days if it's raining you 
can pop on over to Highway 1 Golf and do some entertaining fun with the children. It's a little bit crazy here, but the children absolutely loved it. Monterey is a really nice place to explore by foot and everything is so close together. There is also Pebble Beach and Carmel very close by if you so wish to drive. Day two in Monterey, I'd recommend hiring bikes and riding over to Fisherman's Wharf. The bike trail is easily ridden and flat all the way there. Even I could do it. Also explore Lover's Point, which has a beautiful beach. Look out for the artists painting the pretty view. Don't forget to look out for the seals on your way back. So after a couple of days at Carmel, Monterey and Pebble Beach, continue south to Pismo Beach for the, and stay for the night there. Highway 1 will take you through some spectacular scenery and jaw-dropping cliff-top roads, not for the faint-hearted. You can take the 101 if you want to save some time, but personally, I think driving along Highway 1 is an experience that's an iconic American bucket list thing to do. Halfway down, you will drop to Pfeiffer Beach, which is like no other beach I have ever been to. It has purple sand. Be aware though that it costs $10 to visit and adds about an hour onto your journey south due to the location. This keyhole water feature was amazing and the kids were absolutely mesmerized watching it for ages. After a picnic lunch, get back on the road and head down to Pismo Beach for more intense cliff top driving. Don't miss out on the great photo opportunity here at Bixby Bridge. Built in the 30s, this is definitely a magnificent landmark to include on your trip. As a road slowly heads inland, the scenery fades away into a less grand setting. This part of the drive always seems to take forever, but keep an eye out for the San Simeon, home of the U unique Hearst Castle. Personally, having done it once, I wouldn't stay here again, but it is amazing to see. Once you see Morrow Rock, you know you're on the home straight. Sadly, we got to Pismo Beach a little bit late this time, so there wasn't much time to explore, but it is a great spot to explore if you have more time. This is the outlets we popped to on the way to dinner. So for your final couple of days, you're going back on the freeway to LA. These roads are crazy. Take your time relaxing on one of the many amazing beaches along this coastal front. There's Redondo, there's Manhattan Beach. One of our very favorite places is Manhattan Beach. This creamery is delicious. It's just so cool and trendy here. It's really laid back. It's got a kind of surfer feel to it, I think, like Cornish. It's just a really cool place to hang out. Another great beach nearby is Mother's Beach near Marina Del Rey. It's totally sheltered and great for kids with a big park. Mine loved it here. We only visited it on our last day and it was really cold, but they really, really loved it here. Venice Beach, although somewhat different, shall we say, and not something I would probably be visiting again, having been a few times, it is very unique and very good to see. However, the canals are something really worth visiting. I actually wrote a whole blog post on them because I was so pleasantly surprised. The houses are just amazing. There's so many different things to see along here and it, they have great photo opportunities as well. Santa Monica is nice for an afternoon. Take in the pier, street performers and stop for some delicious lunch or a visit to the beach. Of course, there is so much to see and do in LA. We haven't even mentioned Sunset Boulevard or Hollywood or Beverly Hills. There's so much to do here, but the beach cities are really my favorite thing to do when I'm in LA. So there we have it, the end of your two week road trip. Please give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful and subscribe to see more videos like this. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please enjoy your visit and I will see you next time.